everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to the mods and hey to everyone in chat. And hey, Amber. Hey, how's everybody today? I'm kind of talking softly because the baby's sleeping on me, but can everyone hear me? I can hear you well, so we'll see what chat says, but okay. I bet they can. Yeah. Hey, Shelly, Muffy, Courtney, Valerie, Nat, Demon, Child, Pinehawk, Karen, Sarah, Stephanie, Michelle. Um, so f what we want to, yeah, they say they can hear you, Amber. Cool. Hey, Carolina. So I guess the very first thing, hi, Jonesy. We want to say, um, just kind of say a woman by the name of Trudy Richards passed away. And she was very present in, you know, the YouTube Watts community. She, I, I'd see her around chats all the time. I've spoken with her through chats. I know you have as well, Amber. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. The face and her name. And then, you know, we all see each other in chats. So it's just surreal in a way. I had no idea. I guess she had been ill for a little while. Mm hmm. Yeah. So she passed away. Um, I think everybody learned about this yesterday. So we just wanted to, you know, send condolences. If her family's out there, if they ever hear this, but yeah, I just hope she rests in peace. And I know her presence will definitely be missed by a lot of people. And somebody called her the peaceful glue that held the Watts community together because she was always like a peaceful medium in the middle of, you know, people's disputes, which, you know, the fighting and the drama just seems so irrelevant when something like this happens in the true crime community. Because, you know, we like I said, we all see each other all the time in chats and it just proves how short life is basically and social media just connecting us in a strange way. Yeah, exactly. You know, even though Amber and I've never met her in person, and I don't know about everyone, if you have or haven't, but either way, you still feel like you do get to know somebody when you interact with them, even online. And um, so it's just really, really sad. Yeah, Linda, Trudy Richards passed away. The news came out, at least, I think, for most yesterday. So we just kind of wanted to mention her. And, um, yeah, it's just sad. She was. She really was such a kind person and always just nice and welcoming. And, and Valerie said she was actually involved in another case I was looking into years ago even. Okay, so she was just true crime in general. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I think the first place I remember seeing her was probably in 80. And then I would see her a lot in Mia's chats. Um, but she would always stop by here and say hello. And she was just so kind. So I'd also like to reach out my condolences to um, AD. I know that they were close and, mm -hmm. you know, anybody who was close to her and um, obviously her family as well. Very sorry. Yes, yes. And all of AD's team. I know. Um, they mentioned, you know, chatting with her daily, basically, and just being very close to her. So that is a big loss. And I just hate to hear it, but we just wanted to mention that real fast. So now we'll just kind of get into what, or what we're kind of thinking. So obviously, you know, that Amber and I are very invested in the Watts case. We've kind of not really taking a break, but we've started looking into obviously the Scott Peterson case, but we're still wanting to push for more answers and information in the Watts case. So we've kind of teamed up with Allie, Allie Erickson. I'll link her channel. Um, but we're going to start an Instagram, well, we did make an Instagram and a Twitter account where we're just going to be posting questions about the Watts case and even other cases where we feel there was injustice. The Kendrick Johnson case is one. Um, 
And then we were, we're also going to go over the Freedom of Information Act response that Amber and I received almost a year ago now. And we've never done anything further with it, but we're going to um, appeal it. So and see what happens when we appeal it. It will probably get denied again, but we're going to try. Right. I mean, at this point, like you were saying, um, working with Alex Erickson and does she like to go by Allie? Because I know that her, I don't want to like call her the wrong thing. I know her YouTube says Alex. Either way, we'll link her channel and everyone knows her face. But um, the Instagram, you know, it's sort of uh, social media is just a way that we've kind of all been able to connect, as we were just basically saying, even about um, Trudy. We're all in this like um, environment and community. And the fact that Alex has a platform, Kelly, you've got one, I've got one. It would seem a shame not to use the platform for further uh, research and, you know, just doing what we can, I guess. So that was the whole reason why we've decided, like, let's just further this outside of YouTube and but still use social media as we all live hundreds of miles apart from each other. And the account will just be a, a place that you guys can follow us on and just see. Um, but not even just for you guys to see things. We're going to actually start tagging like on Twitter because uh, District Attorney Rourke uses Twitter a lot. Um, we've come up with just a simple hashtag, like two of them um, that we've used so far on Instagram. And it's what does the ping mean and what hashtag what do the searches mean? And it's basically just saying um, we want answers about the mistress in the Watts case. And we're just going to keep using those hashtags on every post related to the Watts case. And then as we get into other cases, other hashtags will form up and we've tagged um, Weld County in the post on Instagram and Frederick, um, Colorado. And we're just going to keep repeating the hashtag, like hashtag, what does the ping mean? for the district attorney to come out and say they have no explanation for it. And all the interviews we have, we have no um, explanation for it from the mistress. Everything was shut down, as they say, when the plea deal took um, place. So we're just going to use the platform and just kind of let them know that, like, we want to know what this means. And if it's simple as a hashtag or tagging them, then that's what we're going to do like on a daily basis with posts. Yes. And yeah, and we are going to reach it out further than the Watts, but the Watts, obviously, um, thank you so much, Nicole. Finally caught one of your lives, complete respect for your channel. We really appreciate that. And, um, that's another thing we're going to, we're going to talk about something else in a minute too, but yeah. So just basically what Amber was saying, why not use our, the platforms that we have and continue to ask questions. Um, and if nothing comes of it, that's fine. But we can say we tried and see where it goes. But yes, Ali is going to come on another time with us and we're going to go over kind of what we have set up so far. Um, yeah. And again, if there were, you know, if there was no one else involved. They have NK's location the morning of the murders. They cleared her. I just don't understand why they can't tell us, why they can't just come out and say, here's the proof. She wasn't there. I, I just think when you have the DA changing the scene of where the girls passed away, that right there, in my opinion, is a huge red flag. And I, I so. think that there's... Um power in using the um, social media platforms and the hashtags in a sense that um, what we're all going to keep seeing over and over and what we saw in the Netflix documentary, even though Netflix is sort of their own entity and uh, they release their own documentaries and all that, um, we have seen that they still stick to Chris Watts acted alone. And that's fine, but they could at least include some things about the mistress that everyone should know. Like, even if you think Chris Watts acted alone, I think 
that they should still be informed that it did come up with the phone extraction. The mistress searched them a year prior, and it also came up that her phone pinged at a tower, you know, four hours after Shanann had arrived home. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll show you like the page. It doesn't have much on it. I don't even think it has like one single follower, but we're just going to start from like the ground up and between us three and then um, anyone else obviously can use the hashtags. What does hashtag, what does the ping mean? You know, it's, Anytime you post, even in a Watts group or true crime group, like add, add that on there, you know, and it's, it'll just keep raising questions and, you know, tag the district attorney on, on Twitter, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that it's something productive that we can do. And it also shows that we're going to work with another creator and it, it's more to us than just sitting here going through the interviews, going through the um, discovery, it gets to a point where you almost feel like, I feel like helpless and what can mm -hmm. I do to make a ripple, you know? So it's just something small that we can do. And I will link the Instagram or you guys can just search it, I guess. Yeah, and I'll pull it up in a minute just to show you what it looked like so far. We just set it up today, so. Um, yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's a couple comments in here. The case is closed. Chris acted alone, et cetera. And that's fine. If you believe that, then this just might not be your interest and that's okay. Um, you know, people have different opinions about the case and that's completely fine. Um, so. And that, it's funny too, because some of those people who say those comments to us, You'll say, yeah, but can you explain the um, mistress's phone pinging four hours after Shanann arrived home? And they don't know anything about it. So that's just mm -hmm. like the um, hashtags and stuff like in the Instagram and the Twitter. It's supposed to reach everybody who's, you know, invested in true crime. Like it's not just going to be this is our theory. You know, don't follow us unless you believe it. It's it's more than that. Yeah. And um, I mean, we still will go through discovery and interviews. We just want to do something in addition and beyond that. Um, but I mean, again, we're not saying that we're done with the case or anything like that. We'll still do that. But we just wanted to just see what happens with trying this. Um, trying, trying to start the hashtags and start pages and just see what, if anything happens, maybe it won't, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and just show you the Instagram. There's not much on there. There's like, I think, yeah, two posts. So, but it will kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do and how we want to just ask these questions and get them kind of trending and maybe it won't happen, but we'll see. Yes, and feel free to um, follow us on there as um, she brings it up. It's obviously under construction, like we said. Mm hmm Yeah. Hey, Teresa, how are you? Um, okay, I'm just sharing my screen. Yeah, and um, the also Grave Dodger... I'm not sure what BAFTA B -A 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 award will bring new people with new perspectives. I'm not really sure what that means, but you that comment made me think about the Lifetime series that's coming out. So there's um, last year they did one where Jodi Arias' roommates, or cell, I should not say roommates, <laughs> her cellmates spoke out about things that Jodi said to them in prison and her behavior, et cetera. So starting in, I think, end of May, early June, mid-June, Lifetime is doing more of these. So they're going to have one from Casey Anthony's cellmates, Drew Peterson, and Scott Peterson. I'm really looking forward to the Casey Anthony one as well. But Scott Peterson, there's going to be that lady, Krissa, Chrissy, who was engaged at one point to Dylan Tallman, who was Chris's best friend allegedly in prison and she claims he's innocent um 
etc. So that's just going to be interesting to hear. And I think once again, kind of like when the Lifetime movie came out, when the Netflix documentary came out, it's going to draw new people into the case. And I just can't see any harm in trying to keep it out there that there's more than the mainstream media. And especially if she's coming on and saying that possibly accomplices were involved and Chris had says that had said that in prison, then I think that's all the more reason to continue to show evidence that leads us to believe, yes, there possibly was at least one accomplice involved to some level, you know? So, yeah, that's true. Um, that Dylan stuff is old news for to us. Yeah, because he was on AD and um, a lot of, you know, the true followers in the YouTube communities have heard it all, but there's going to be a lot of people who probably will have just hear about the case from that Lifetime show on June 25th. And then they'll start searching the Watts case. And that's where I just feel that we should continue putting it out there um, to continue painting the picture that there are questions. Okay, I'm adding the link. And now let me pull up my screen. Hold on. Because let's face it, we can collaborate with Alex and all that over and over on YouTube. But YouTube is just one setting where we can be getting the message out there mm -hmm. so yeah this isn't anything fancy guys like we just threw this together today something we've been talking about since we actually met up with alex um, on our collab like a few weeks ago so we just think like you know what let's just get the ball rolling on things that we can actually control because obviously we can't control if there really is an ongoing investigation there's really not much you know you could really do besides get your message out there and you know the kendrick johnson case and a lot of other cases you wouldn't believe have questionable um missteps i think investigative systems and all that so if you guys have um instagram true crime exposing injustice is where we are starting it's going to be daily posts and they're going to come from us and um ally and it's just basically summing up the little things like hashtag what does the ping mean um i just think if if we did these posts over and over and it's just it's research too like people can look up hashtag chris watts and then stumble on this and be like wait i never knew like any of this took place you know there's nothing wrong with getting facts out there and these are facts right like we just want to know yeah why her phone pink why she googled them a year before the murders why they you know didn't take that in our opinion seriously um he straight up said, well, he pled guilty. So we didn't look into any f more of her devices. So I don't know. I just think it's good just to kind of continue posting these questions. Oh, awesome. We're already getting followers. Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, Allie's and yeah, why she destroyed her SIM card. Allie's involved in all of this, too. Yeah, that is a good one. Um, yeah, and that's another thing. Alex um, has a TikTok. I don't have TikTok, but she does. And she already does a lot of true crime on her TikTok. Um, so, yeah, hopefully something will come out of it. If not, we can say that we tried to, you know, get our questions out there and that's it. And that's the thing is like we, I know everybody else probably does too, but I spend so much time like, you know, if the baby's sleeping or, or whatever, scrolling through Instagram and I'm looking at, you know, stuff that I can't afford, you know, like just different <laughs> things that are kind of um, put in the algorithm that I will see and stuff. And now I'm like, why am I just not using the Instagram? Like I'm using my YouTube for like a voice. So with Twitter as well, like the fact that you can just tag anybody, like people mm -hmm. have gotten, you know, money back from their flights by tagging JetBlue, you know, like th these are just little things that you can actually do on these platforms. So if we want to ask 
DA Rourke every day or whenever we want to, like, hey, like, what's this about? Like, when are we going to get answers? And then, you know, whatever. It's productive and you're still on your social media that you would still be logging into and going through anyways. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, I just feel like it's no harm for us to do it. You know, we're taxpayers. This is America. Um, I think when there's unidentified prints and there's, you know, not clear evidence, even the DA changed the crime scene. I just think that's worth questioning. So, yeah, spreading awareness of the questions. Exactly. And so. if, we, if people can do that about so many subjects on social media, like, you know, they, these things can happen, like ripples and um, small waves. And it's more than just, hey, you want to collab on YouTube on my channel and then we can do your channel next. Like, it's like we can only do that so much where it gets to the point where it's like, let's do something more like proactive. Like, let's reach out. Let's tag D.A. Rourke. Like, um let's make sure he knows, you know, he's on our radar and we want, we want to know like what exactly this means. If it's nothing, then it's nothing. Um, we can at least ask him in, in hopes he'll answer because especially with COVID, there was talk of, well, let's go there and let's protest peacefully. Well, you know, with the baby and we have kids, you know, traveling COVID, all that, it's like, we can't get there, you know, mm -hmm let alone all at the same time, that would just be a miracle. So let's just use the social media and um, do what we can with the tools we're given and what we can do. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did with the Freedom of Information Act, which anybody can go to the FBI um, website and they can apply themselves on any case. Doesn't have to be Chris Watts case, but um, we did that and we'll show you all that and then now it's to the point where like, okay, let's just appeal it. Like they add, they give you the option. Why are we just sitting here talking about, I really want to get answers. You know, you can talk it, but if you don't walk the walk, you know, it's really, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of how I was kind of getting like talking about it so much. And again, I'll, I'll still talk about it. I'm not tired of the case. I don't want to necessarily stop talking about it. I just wanted to do something in addition to it. And then, you know, Allie kind of brought up the idea and Amber and I obviously would be on board. So here we are. And it'll be interesting to see where it goes. So um, Jolene, unfortunately, Cadle said that she was told misinformation about the arrest. So there has been no arrest or anything like that. Um, we haven't created the Twitter account yet. We'll keep you updated on that. Um, we've just started with the Instagram today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, I've never had Twitter or TikTok. Um <laughs> anything like that. So me either. And um, I honestly, I just didn't want to add another like social media thing to kind of distract me from my everyday life. You know, I already have mm -hmm. enough of that with what I do have. But like I was saying, if I have the Instagram and if we're going to do something productive, I have no problem joining Twitter or if yeah. it gets to the point where I'm on TikTok, then that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, um, Another one are the trucks, the gray truck that they, um, that Betty reported seeing. That's another thing that a lot of people don't know about. Exactly. So, just and the little things. With Chris Watts being a really popular hashtag on Instagram, which I was surprised about, um, let's just like show them like these are the great trucks i mean it's just it's gonna be like really i almost feel like the instagram page would be like a good page to go to for people who just want like a collection of like facts and like piecing together different cases yes yes exactly yeah the 111 minute phone call so 
There's quite a bit. And the 111 minute phone call is something that would be great to tag District Attorney Rourke in because they don't even ask her about it. Um, I think like one time and we never got like back to it at all. Right. Yeah, exactly. So let's, um, we're also going to appeal the Freedom of Information Act. So I'll read, I'll pull it up, but when I pull it up, it gets blurry. Um, but we'll read it to you. Yeah, that's, I remember him saying that her truck had been stolen. That's interesting. I never really thought putting that one together, Cher. Was Nate's mom also living in that neighborhood or no? I'm not sure if, if at the time she was living in the house or in the neighborhood. I don't know. She's living in the house now, and I don't think Nate is. But I don't know if she was living in the Watts house or in the neighborhood at the time of the murders. I'm not sure. Okay. That'd be yeah. interesting to know if it was even in, like, Frederick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting. Okay. she He said she was in the next town over. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I vaguely remember that conversation. I do not remember the details of it. So, all right. So, let's look at... Okay, Nate's mom was living in the house at the time and now rents the house. Okay. Um, Nate's mom's truck was stolen and he mentions it to an officer on the, I think it was the 14th. Yeah, because you can see Chris when he's leaving. He was the 14th and he's asking him for the footage, the Xfinity footage. And he was kind of like, I can't deal with this right now. My mother-in-law's truck was stolen. We have to go get her. And does yeah. Um, so wait, was it stolen on Monday night or Sunday night? I'm not sure. See, I don't remember. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to rewatch that for sure. Yeah, Nate. Well, Nate doesn't live there, but his mom lives there. And Dave said... Because Mexi has spoken to Nate's mom and she's allowing him to go into her house to do a paranormal investigation and interview her. So. Anyway, so let's look at the um, Freedom of Information Act. So we did this about a year ago. Okay, you're right, Sandy Beach. Nate's mother-in-law got the car stolen. But the mom lives in the house. Okay. Seems like even if um, it's not related, a, a lot of crime in that area, like even with it being a decent neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I think where it was stolen from wasn't the neighborhood. Though. It was, I think she said it was the next town over. Crazy. I know. Um, all right, I'm trying to pull this up. You're not, it's going to get blurry. I don't know why it does that. You're fine. But, um, for those who don't know what we are pulling up, um, anyone who's living in America can apply themselves, like I was saying, through the FBI website. And this is supposed to give us as much as they have, um, for public information on any case you apply for. Um, and I think the only other YouTuber who has done this is True Psych Ward and possibly Plunder. Mm -hmm. And I'm fairly certain everyone's gotten the same response we have. It's very bizarre. Like, so when we show it to you guys, help me try to understand exactly what they're saying. Yeah, like I said, it's not going to show, but should I just read it? Yeah, that's fine because it's okay. probably better than showing it's, them a blurry screen. Yeah, it's blurry. Um, and it's in our group. If you're in our Facebook group, you can just search F-O-I-A mm -hmm. in the group and then it'll come up. Yes. Um, 
Bartwan says, have you raised a Cora request at all? No. We have not. But we certainly can. Mm -hmm. And these are just the things that like, I hope other people are, are looking to do um, just in their spare time if they have it. Exactly. Yes. Um, thank you, Dave G, for modding and dropping links. You're really, really appreciated. Okay, so I'm just going to read the response. So I got this on June 17th of 2020. So it's coming up on a year now. Um, it says, the acknowledgement receipt of your Freedom of Information Act request to the FBI, the F. OIPA request number listed above has been assigned to your request. You have requested records on one or more third party individuals. Please be advised the FBI will neither confirm or deny the existence of such records pursuant to the FOIA exemptions. The mere acknowledgement of the existence of FBI records on third party individuals could reasonably be expected to constitute an unwarranted 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 invasion of personal privacy this is our standard response to such request and should not be taken to mean that the records do not exist as a result your request has been closed please visit fbi.gov select service information management and freedom of information privacy act for more information about making requests for records on third-party individuals uh, and then just some more stuff. So it says, you may seek to dispute resolution services by contacting the Office of Government Information Services. The contact information is as follows. And then it gives the information. Also, you may contact the FBI's FOIA public liaison by emailing. If you should submit your dispute resolution correspondence by email, the subject heading should state dispute resolution services. So they basically said, um, yeah, the privacy. So we're going to appeal it and just see. I'm sure we'll get turned on again, but we're just going to see what happens. When we do that, we kind of never did because, like you just said, I feel like we're just going to get denied. What's again. the point? Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty set on um, pr protecting third party individuals, their privacy. Um, I'm not really sure why they would be so like adamant on not revealing anything, like even um, public pictures that we already have. Like, why didn't we just get anything they had, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, and Mama Bear said, is this the email from Amanda? This is um, a response from trying to get information via the Freedom of Information Act. So that was the response we got. Yeah, I mean, um, it's literally the FBI office, um, their response. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it means you're not getting it. Exactly. <laughs> Everything I said could just basically say you're not getting it. Sorry. <laughs> nice try. Um, so we tried that. And hey, Derek. So. But with it being a year later, I'm curious if like maybe that would make a difference. Who knows? But instead of just sitting around wondering what would happen, we're just going to do it. And mm -hmm. instead of talking, talking about doing something. We're actually just going to do it. Um, we want more, obviously, than just what we've been given. And that kind of leads me to another topic I just wanted to address is the mock trial on a certain somebody's um, YouTube. And I know that there were a bunch of cool creators and researchers and web sleuths in the community that were going to work on this mock trial. It was something that I think sounds really interesting to a lot of people. And from the feedback I've been given, a lot of people are actually interested in it. Um, we like to do a, a weekly or, you know, biweekly Watts case update, sort of what we're doing right now. And we were just going to throw in highlights and stuff that we've heard from this mock trial. So 
if people were interested in getting our um, opinions and obviously criticism and, you know, we've done the interviews, we've done um, the discovery. If, if people can't see that the mainstream media will never give us a mock trial like is being put together, then I don't know. But um, it's not something that we're on here saying, like, go watch this. But it is something that seems to be, you know, making waves in the YouTube. And there were um, close creators that we actually like to support that were working on the project. So if that takes place, we intended to just give you guys like updates or opinions here and there as we figured in our Facebook groups and in the chat, a lot of people would be referring to it anyways. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm going to be honest, so far I've tried to watch and I have not really been able to get into it or follow it. Um, but I, again, I do think it could be interesting just to see what and if anything is pulled out. I will say that she did have me surprised when she did bring up that they used someone from a gang unit on this case. I think that's very interesting why they're using someone from a gang unit. Um, it makes me wonder if there was, you know, they thought maybe they were dealing with a group or, you know, a group kind of criminal activity with the case. I don't know. Um, but I will also say with the trial, you know, we, their mock trial, we don't have everything. So it's going to be obviously nothing like the real, like what we would get if all the discovery was available to us. But I don't know if you could, you know, learn something. <laughs> and I know I did already. So exactly and, and that's the thing is like um they used a somebody in law enforcement like you said that specialized in gang activity um that was something that we didn't know and i'm sure people in the chat didn't know and we are in true crime you know we are researchers we all want to seek the truth in this case and in a lot of cases um so if we're reaching out to FBI and, and trying to get answers for you guys, why wouldn't we still um, use other people's research and come together and, and work together like we're doing with Alex and get some sort of answer in any way, shape or form? Mm -hmm. I really don't see like the big deal. Like we, uh, so many people followed KK and commented on KK so many, YouTubers have had this um, person on their channel as well. And, you know, we're not even having her link or anything like that in, in, on our page or chats. We're just going to comment on highlights that, you know, honestly, people are probably going to send us screenshots. Right. This happened. And, you know, it's like we work as a community. And like you said, you had a hard time following. I, I am not even going to lie before you even said that to me, like private message, I popped in there and I was like, what is happening? Like, I can't deal with somebody who's very like fidgety and like moves the hat and tugs at the ear. And like, it was very distracting for me to follow her. And I was just hoping that hopefully other people involved in the mock trial would demonstrate like a sense of professionalism and like research and, and take it serious. I'm a little concerned after saying that like, oh, this will be interesting. And the people involved are, you know, really good like researchers because they are like Amanda and, and I don't even know who else we're gonna be involved, but I know that they had contact a lot of like really good um, people who know the case and who could do this. Now I'm seeing there is like, it's just hard for me to follow. So I think that we didn't, expect that to happen so now like i watched last night and i'm like what is going on like i maybe we'll just comment here and there when we do our um, watts updates and if anybody in chat wants to tell us what they've seen about it please feel free like share i honestly there's a lot of people that are watching it and i seen it last night that you know she had people and there's people who are want to um, do this but now i'm just like um, mm -hmm. I don't know, guys, like, 
it's very hard. And I'm hoping that people will just do highlights or share highlights with us. Or if I know somebody's about to testify that day who I like to support, then I will tune in. Um, that just seemed like there was a little bit of drama. I'm not even going to lie. And I hate even addressing drama about us wanting to comment on it. Like, why would it matter if we comment on something that a bunch of YouTubers were collaborating on? Right. And here's the thing. We care about our subscribers and we, we care about your opinions and we want to constantly keep the utmost respect for the victims of this case. And we would never do anything that we don't feel is doing that. But again, I don't, I'm not trying to say that one, we even support the mock trial support who is doing it. Um, but if I can go into anybody who is going through the discovery of the case and find something, I'm going to, you know, be interested in that because I have already learned something. And, you know, I just, um, it's not, but no, Teresa's, and yeah, I don't know. It's like you can't, you can never make everybody happy. Well, can I be completely honest? Is from what I've seen, a lot of people were happy that we decided that we were going to comment on it. Yeah, overall, yes. Really in, involve themselves with supporting that channel. But at the same time, like there, oh. like I said, there's other people involved in it. It's not just Lana, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. Oh, Teresa, nothing. There, there's nothing. We haven't really spoken about anything besides our Instagram that we've made with Alex Erickson. Um, we're going to appeal the Freedom of Information Act through the FBI after we've already gotten denied basically records. And then now we're just saying that since we already do Watts case updates where we just talk about um, random things, we were just going to talk about the mock trial in, in those updates. And we were just saying that it seems like there was like a little bit of drama for, I'm not even sure why, like I understand that the person's controversial, but we made a point to say, if you don't want to follow her directly, you can follow us and we're just going to get updates from people involved or like I said, we're going to support um, people who we support who are doing it and they're doing it out of a sense of research that doesn't have anything to do with personal feelings like this is true crime. And it was just very much like we were told basically that somebody was going to denounce what we're doing publicly and put it out there that what we were doing was wrong and they didn't care because they think that, you know, they're in the right and that's fine. If people want to run their channels and Facebook groups how they want, then that's fine. Um, we're just going to do a Watts update like we always do. We've updated you all on things that we hear through the grapevine. And honestly, most time people come into our chat and give us news. Mm -hmm. So that I think, and I know that people in here have already said like, yeah, you know, it seems interesting and, um, you know, it is what it is like with who's running it, but the people involved in it, they're doing it out of their own volunteer time for the good of research. So if it ends up being a sham, like last night when I tuned in, I was just kind of like, guys, I don't know. Like I thought it would be like more organized. Maybe it is like, I don't know, but working for the um, good of the case, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, I think that we've proven to everybody that we care about research and we care about facts. Um, I don't think that we should be questioned at all as far as our dignity and our morals. And basically we were questioned by somebody who we thought, you know, was somebody that knew us um, and what our hearts and souls are. And I just want to say that, you know, we don't mean any harm by giving you guys updates on the Watts case and you guys give us more updates um, anyways. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. This is just what's taking place on YouTube. We're all in the same community, you know, like you know, we can just collaborate our ideas. And if there's people who we enjoy supporting working on this project, then I'm going to support them just like I supported um, when Dr. B went to Colorado. You know, we 
we're very much interested in what information could be had, you know, and it's, we've given you guys the link to the FBI website. You guys can apply for it. We've given you the um, hashtags that we're going to be circulating around. So you guys know us and, and that's, that's fine with me. Like, um, I'm not going to question where Kelly's morals are or anything like that. Like I never had to. And uh, we appreciate everyone's support and we're glad that you guys see us for exactly what we're actually trying to do, which is just, you know, make waves, research and get answers. Mm -hmm. And if it, I mean, it has just started. If it is turning into a bashing thing or a joke, we'll say, you know what, we're done with it. We'll see what you guys might say, but we're not going to engage it. Um, but we just kind of put it out there. Like if, People don't want to watch it and they want a summary. And then I see Sandy Beach says Lana's fine with that, whatever. Um, so, I, yeah. And if it, it gets weird, <laughs> you know, we don't have to continue to support it. But And, yeah, I mean, some people say they would steer clear. And that's, that's you. Everyone needs to just do their own thing. And if you don't want to support it, don't. If you do, great. Um, I'm going to see what happens with it and then see where it goes. And that's it. Exactly. And it's not like we've said, it's not like that's our main project. Like, you know, we right. said we're doing all these other things to make waves outside of YouTube, even um, in contacting FBI, you know, we're making waves. We're doing things that are productive. If we want to talk about what's going on and what Watts Island, then how is that any different from what other people do and what we've done in the past? Mm -hmm. You know, and we have so much that we're doing, like for the Scott Peterson case, like I don't know if everybody or anybody has watched those lives with us, but we have so much more stuff to share with you guys that, you know, that we have more things that we, we want to put out there and share with you and like you said we care about our subscribers mm -hmm, um, very much yeah, and a single message not a single one uh, somebody saying you shouldn't do this right except what? one <laughs> we made comments about kk yeah we talked to kk we even had her on here mm -hmm. and it wasn't because we necessarily support everything that she did but they're part of the case and they're part of I don't know. Again, it was just kind of that was all discouraging, but we don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to get into drama. We just want to move forward and do our own thing and see where what happens with it. But you guys are just so amazing and you are who we care about. So, yeah. you know, yeah. And I appreciate everybody's opinions and um, just encouraging us. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And for those, like I've said before, you don't have to watch the trial. We're just probably, if if somebody messages me about something that took place or if somebody that I support is working on the trial, I'm going to peep in. Am I going to sit here and watch it and give you guys a play-by-play -play and, oh my gosh, this happened at this time? No. <laughs> That's not going to be what's going to happen. Like, it's just going to be like it's always been. Here's an update. Here's what we heard. This is rumor. This is fact. I uncovered this. Didn't know that, you know, so. Mm -hmm. But I am super excited for things not relevant to that because that took up way too much of our time. <laughs> but I'm just excited for um, some stuff that we have to share with you guys about Watt's case. Some stuff that we've noticed that were just kind of unusual that um, took place on Monday. Um, I'll save that for you know when we have like more time because it's going to require um, sandy's testimony at one point and something that lauren shanann's friends said and then just chris himself on body cam um so we have like we've pieced together something that was just kind of unusual about monday that we'll share with you guys soon yes yeah well um Maybe do another live this week on that. And then, because we got to wrap this one up. But this one was just kind of a quick update. We just wanted to kind of let you know more of what our thoughts were behind saying we were going to follow the trial, et cetera. Um, and 
you know, let you know about the Instagram, the Twitter, and then, um, yeah. So we can plan that maybe for the Thursday or Friday. I can't believe it's already Wednesday. <laughs> so we went fast. Yes. So I'm about to link right now the um, FBI website that anybody can go to. Um, you can apply for the Information Act records. Um, maybe a year later, you'll get a different answer than what myself, Kelly, Dr. B, and Plunder have gotten. Who knows? And if you get the same answer that we have, it'll show you right on your um, form how to appeal it. So you can actually do that process yourself if you wanted. Um, I'm also going to link again uh, Alex's YouTube. I don't have her uh, Twitter. Well, we haven't made the Twitter yet, but I don't have her TikTok. Um, yeah, well, sure I'll get, get that, that in the description. Okay, cool. Um, just curious, like, was there anything else we kind of wanted to address? Um, like, we didn't really expect to have to do this live, but you know, we kind of had to like clear the air because it seemed like there was drama for no reason. Yeah, we don't want to upset anybody at all. That's not our prerogative. Um, and again, I've gotten no responses that were upset besides that one certain person. Yeah. So, yeah, anyways, uh, we'll wrap it up. And then we are definitely going to be doing more Scott Peterson. We are definitely going to um, continue looking into more what stuff also and forming more questions. So, And when mm -hmm. is our next Scott Peterson live? I only ask because somebody is waiting oh, sorry, on a just response from me about it in oh. Facebook. And oh. They want to make sure that they tune in to the next Scott Peterson one. Um, whenever works for you, honestly. Okay. Do we want to do that Watts one Thursday and then do a Scott Peterson? Or did you want to do Scott Peterson and then that Watts one? Or Let's do the Watts one ne next since we mentioned it. Okay. Sounds and then, good. yeah, we'll do Peterson. Because we really want to get into reading the... Um, trial transcripts and not we're not probably we're probably not gonna read every single but the real important ones and everything like that so yeah and just because my fiance said we could do it tonight i'll <laughs> i mm -hmm. just haven't i haven't had a chance to like use my new laptop for my um channel at all but basically i'm going to chain like there is a scott peterson interview um uploaded on YouTube. However, it's got static and it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm just going to clean up the police interview with Scott and zoom in on his body language, upload that. And then I wanted to come with you and everybody in chat who want to follow the Scott Peterson case with us and review, you know, the interview together and his body language, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting because um, I haven't listened to his interview all the way through. I've listened to parts, but I haven't mm -hmm. listened and really taken it all in. Yep. And this is in court today, right? Um, he Scott, he was in yesterday and he goes back, I believe, in sometime in June, like 60 days. Yep. So we're just going to keep everyone. Anyway, his right to a speedy trial that for his appeal or retrial. That you know, mm -hmm. is in My, I mean, he's definitely getting a retrial for the penalty phase. That is happening. So, and in case anyone wanted to know, I'm undecided. I've always thought Scott was guilty. We're just re going through things with a fresh look. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So without the mainstream media, we're getting into interviews and trial transcripts. So it seems like a lot of you have interest. So we'll, yeah, I would definitely continue on. And if you guys, I know we've been only doing lives once or twice a week, but we can start doing more in the afternoon. And I do think we should start doing some more in the evenings, just so people who can't come in the afternoon, in the afternoon, um, if people can't make it in the afternoon, that they have the option for evening too. Yeah. We yeah. Would, it's so hard because 
like you said, we want to do it for the evening because afternoon people are at work, et cetera. And then we get people from the UK and across the pond and they're telling us like, <laughs> do the afternoon one. So yeah, we can do some of those. Nothing's ever going to have like a pattern for us. It's just. No, <laughs> we're not yeah. pattern people. <laughs> just when you can. I get so yes. confused though, just reading through chat and uh, when people refer to Amber Fry, like they don't say Amber Fry, they say Amber. So I think they're talking about me and yeah. I <laughs> I read this one and I'm like, what? What? If anyone done a side by side of NK and Amber would make NK <laughs> worse than she does. And I'm just like, I thought that was about me. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you're definitely more beautiful than both of them. <laughs> oh, my That's God. Funny. oh my God. Oh, wait, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I have to go pick up my child. So. That was just a quick, brief little update and things to be watching for. And yeah, I guess let's plan that one for tomorrow because we pretty much have everything set up for it. So, okay, yay! Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. We'll share the premiere in our Facebook groups and on my community page. I always share it, and then you'll see it on um, this YouTube CDT. Yes. And then tomorrow we'll go through something that's raised our eyebrow. Yes, for sure. All right, guys. Well, we'll talk tomorrow and to everybody just for being so kind and listening to us kind of explain and um talk through everything so and thanks to the mods yes thank you mods and um we'll add the instagram name in the description so you mm -hmm. guys can follow us on there and that's just our true crime account on there and then when we make the twitter we'll let you guys know and we'll be tagging da rourke on twitter and then we can just share like screenshots if we ever get like a response or you know obviously yes yep and ali's um alex is going to be working on all this as well so and thank all you right. yes r.i.p yes. Rudy richard yes absolutely so, all right, guys. Well, we'll talk tomorrow, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Good night. Bye. Bye, Amber. Bye.